Hello, welcome to GCSE Bite Size Science with Dr Chris Smith and with Dr Kat Arney. We're from The Naked Scientists. In part one, we heard about the history of life on Earth. But how did it all evolve, Kat? Well, according to the theory of evolution, evolution happens by natural selection. So what exactly is that? Well, the key things to know are that individuals in a species have a wide range of variation. So just look at us humans. Some people are tall, some are short, some are blonde, some are brunette, some have dark skin, some have light skin. There's loads of differences between us and all these differences are due to differences in our genes. But how does that actually lead to evolution taking place? Well, individuals in a species whose genes make them most suited to living in their environment are more likely to survive and to reproduce. OK, so give us some examples. Well, how about giraffes? During their evolution, there's probably some primitive giraffe who had a slightly longer neck than the others, so they could get to leaves growing higher up in the trees and get more food. So they'd be likely to do better and pass these long neck genes onto their babies. And over many, many years, this would mean that the long neck genes would become much more common in the population, leading to those elegant giraffes that we have today. But what about animals that aren't so well suited to their environment? Well, obviously, they're not going to do so well, so there's much less chance that they'll get to reproduce and pass their genes on. Well, that all seems to make good sense, but how do we know that evolution actually happens? Most of the clues that we've got come from fossils in the ground, and this is known as the fossil record. Well, unfortunately, it's not perfect, and there are some big gaps in How come? Well, some animals and plants just don't fossilise that well, and some fossils have been destroyed over time. And, of course, there's probably fossils we haven't even found yet. But are there any really good examples of fossils that make the case for evolution? Well, a great example is the horse, and we've got an almost complete fossil record of all the main stages of horse evolution, showing it evolve over 60 million years from a cute little dog-sized creature called Eohippus that lived in forests. And over time, it's changed through animals known as Mesohippus, Merichippus and Pliohippus to the horses we have today, living on plains and up to two metres tall. And for a great example of evolution, just look at the feet of these creatures. You can see them evolving from little multi-toed feet that they used in the forest to their single-toed hooves that we have today for galloping out over the plains. But earlier you said that this was a theory of evolution, so does that mean it's not actually true? Well, the main problem with studying evolution is that it takes millions of years and no scientists live that long. So we have to call it a theory because you can't do experiments that last millions of years, which would prove it in the scientific sense. But we do have plenty of evidence to show that it certainly does happen. Such as? A good example is the peppered moth, which lives in Britain. Now, before the Industrial Revolution in the early 19th century, most peppered moths were pale. So when they were hanging around on pale birch trees, they couldn't be spotted by the birds and eaten. Now, some moths had gene ver- versions that gave them a black colouring, uh, these didn't do so well because they were pretty quickly picked off for a tasty snack. And then what happened? With the Industrial Revolution came industry and with that came pollution. Now this blackened the trees in industrial areas so that the black moths now had an advantage in their environment and the pale moths quickly became bird food. And over time we saw the populations change so that in urban areas black moths started to outnumber the pale ones. Well, that sounds pretty impressive, but are there any other examples? We have pathogens, such as bacteria and viruses, and we know that they can evolve pretty quickly because they multiply very fast. So, for example, E. coli bacteria can pick up random mistakes in their DNA when they copy their DNA in order to multiply. Most of the time, these mistakes are pretty bad and kill the cell, but sometimes the mistake or mutation can be useful, so it spreads in the population. And a good example of this would be gene faults that cause resistance to antibiotics, which obviously gives an advantage to those bacteria compared with bacteria that aren't resistant and in fact antibiotic resistant bacteria are now becoming an increasing problem in our hospitals. And what happens if evolution doesn't take place? Well if enough individuals in a species are poorly suited to their environment and they don't adapt then they're going to die out or become extinct and this especially happens if the environment changes quite quickly such as we're seeing today with climate change and things like new diseases, predators and competing species moving in can also put pressure on species to adapt or die. And so how common is extinction? Well, we know from the fossil record that many, many species have become extinct since the start of life on Earth, and it's still happening, and much of it is due to our human activity. So one example of this is the dodo, which was a large flightless bird that lived on the beautiful island of Mauritius in the Indian Ocean. Now, until the 17th century, this island was uninhabited, so the dodo had a great time. You know, there's no predators, it's just chilling in the sunshine. But along came the Dutch sailors who colonised the island and hunted the dodo for food. And they also brought over pigs, cats and rats, which ate the dodo's eggs. So sadly, within 80 years, the dodo was extinct, thanks to humans.